can they bottle it up for 16 minutes and break through to championship weekend. But right now, Goliath, Trevor Baptiste against Tristan David Erlin in one of the most anticipated opening face-offs this sport has ever seen. Push on Denver, Albany ball. Spirited wing play as you'd expect. Got a certain flair. Scotty Marr yesterday playing air guitar in the locker room with the Grateful Dead. Uncle John's band playing early. And Albany this season 11-0 when scoring first. And they're now two for two with the faceoff offense. Here's Kyle McClancy over to Ray. To Hogan, Ned to Coke. Uncle Cross and Kyle McClancy, he's old school. Plays defense as we see this in a super slow mode. Erlin wins the clamp. Second face off of the game. And then McClancy, the wing work. It's a three man game at the face off X. And then it's money in the bank. Dahoga Nanakoke, you saw the. Everyone in the building locked in on the face-off X. And TD Erlin now three for three. Erlin to Ray. Watch out for the long pole, number 10. That's Troy Ray, Justin Ray's brother. Justin's got the ball, and Troy had a hat trick last week. Here comes Justin Ray against Nick Phillips. He'll isolate the shorty. The lead is... Shot the goal, and there's Troy Ray, brother to brother. The day... They do. With the beast right now, Erlin, three, Baptiste, zero. What are you seeing so far? So what we're noticing, both of these guys are realizing the exact same thing at the same time. Every time Albany wins a faceoff, it could directly correlate to a goal. And for TD, that is a huge rush of confidence. And for Trevor, that's a huge weight on his shoulders right now. And we're going to see how each of those guys use that momentum. Technically, what are you seeing from TD? TD's doing exactly what he had to do. He, he learned from, from the past mistakes. He's sticking that left foot in the ground, and he's trying to get around Trevor immediately. Trevor can't use his weight advantage to crush down on the ball because TD's getting to his right shoulder quickly. And it's number four, the fourth face-off. Always anticipated when two of the best going at it. Referees letting them go here. There's no, really no adjustments. Face-off violation on Baptiste, so early four for four. We wondered how Albany would fare with diminished possessions in this game because we assumed you know, Baptiste probably would have the advantage. He has not lost a face-off battle in his junior and senior years. But if Albany gains the possession advantage, Denver can't keep up with this offense. Field level here with Greg the Beast. The knee up in the booth wondering the weather conditions, how wet it is. Perfect counter by Trevor. Baptiste, huge, huge trail point and Wow, that would have really really got Trevor going on that. Um, yeah, the weather conditions are tough. I mean, obviously, when you exit with the ball, the catching of the of the ball when the mesh is still kind of watered, like wet and, and still pocketed, it's tough because it bubbles. You want that pocket to kind of drop in for you. So it's interesting to see how you guys can tell both these guys when they're exiting, they're trying to catch the ball up tight near their chin, and the other guy's getting to his feet really well. We haven't had a clean exit without one of them being on the other person's hip yet. They're doing a great job getting their feet. They know that the weather's going to make it tough for each of them to catch. It was Casey Vock who sent Scott Marr some tape. He said, I got this kid out here. I think he fits what you guys are doing. Uh, he's fit in nicely. Connor Fields took him under Fields' wing last year. And Patterson, especially of late, 14 goals in his previous four games. McCaffrey answers right back. 
back to the face-off X. Denver has won two in a row after Albany won the first four. And TD Erland takes this one away. A much ballyhooed face-off matchup. 5-2 in favor of Albany. Jack Bergmaster. Two, I'm with legendary face-off man Greg Gorenlian, also known as the Beast. Let's break down a couple of those first quarter face-offs, big fella. A lot of guys make the mistake of coming down when you lose the clamp and try to rip out a guy's arm. Both of these guys are doing the best counter in lacrosse. Get to your feet immediately when you lose the clamp and start disrupting the exit as your opponent starts to pop the ball out. TD and, and Baptiste have both stolen a face-off win from the other by getting to their feet quickly, and then when the other person pops the ball out, you get hip to hip, disrupt the exit, steal the ball. That's the best counter in face-offs right now. Next level stuff, big guy. That's a great point, Paul. You can lose the clamp, but if you kind of anticipate where the other guy's gonna rake it out to, you beat him to the spot. We get a loose ball push, it's against Denver, so Albany has now won six out of eight. Here's Kyle McClancy, who was an offensive midi at the beginning of the season, now back to being primarily a D midi. No Drew Sapinski, Connor Donahue missed four games with an injury. We'll see Donahue today, but in a limited role. Baptiste. Baptiste is no Fogo. Seven goals on the season. What's Fogo stand, stand Face for? Face off, get off. Oh, I thought it was fear of getting old. For some. And there'll be a cat and mouse game between Trevor Baptiste and TD Erlen when one of them wins. Matchups in this game. You've seen it back to back goals, unassisted Sullivan and Reed, where the flow of the offensive pattern creates all sorts of space. And now Baptiste wins another face-off. This is where Denver can suction the momentum. Troy Ray knocked it out. Baptiste recovers. And Bill Tierney calls a timeout to salvage the possession with 10.24 to go in the first half. And this place felt like an Albany home game. And all of a sudden now, Denver's proven in their offense they can score. T uh, TD has lost a few face-offs. Trevor's on a roll now. He's feeling himself. He's staying out on offense. This place feels like an absolute neutral UFC match right now. It's crazy. Love it. Almost even now on face-off. 6-5 in favor of Albany, but the Great Danes won six of the first eight. Baptiste loses Erlen. Baptiste on the doorstep. His pass intercepted by Troy Ray. Troy Ray, the Harkins on this team. Following in the footsteps of the great Lyle Thompson and Miles and Ty Thompson. And he looks great in these. You know, we covered the, uh, Paul and I covered the Under Armour All America game last uh, June, I'd say. He was a little, you know, big. Uh, you saw, you see him yesterday. And the hands of an absolute magician. Baptiste, meanwhile, has won four face offs in a row. Erlen gets this one for Albany. Then lost it. It's picked up by Denver. Danny Logan, the terrific two-way midi. How do you stat that one, Anish? Uh, you win the faceoff, you lose possession. And, you know, Paul mentioned... That man right there, Trevor Baptiste and TD Erlen. It's been special stuff from an access perspective. Let's take a look. First half, Greg. So on face-offs, on every single face-off, both players line up to the ball, not touching the line, hands on the ground, not touching the plastic. The referee deems they're ready to go, puts the ball down, says set, backs out, then he blows the whistle. And on, on, on every single one of these face-offs, both guys trying to get the top sidewall over top of the ball to establish what we call a clamp. Once you have that leverage advantage, then you can work on your exit and get the ball out. This is not an easy task, obviously. You got about 400 pounds battling each other, but what you can notice is as the guy gets the clamp, the opposing player is doing a good job of getting to his feet. You have one step to pop that ball out. You can't run within the back of your stick, so both players are trying to intercept the ball as his opponent pops the ball out. 
What was your feeling about the wing play in half one? It's interesting wing play. Both teams have a weird wing play style that's not allowing their own faceoff guy to get a fast break. And if he does go defensive exit towards his own goal, he has to run under duress. So I'm not sure what they're thinking on these. Ready for half two? Oh, my God, let's go. X marks the spot this afternoon here in Hempstead. And in the first half of this battle royale, slight edge to TD Erlin, who came in having won 83% of his faceoffs. Trevor Baptiste at 77% coming into play. Erlin on pace to break the single season all time record. And there is Kark and Greg. Best view in the house for the faceoff. How do you like this view? I love this view. This is a lot. It doesn't hurt as much as when I'm on the field. <laughs> but this is this is money right here. Clamp, battle, gain leverage, and then they're going to look for the exit. Trevor looks for his exit, and TD did a great job of getting to his feet to battle it. See, and that's it. That's the whole thing in a nutshell. TD Irwin going dove. quickly. Kyle McClancy, Justin Ray. And once again, Albany, when they win the faceoff, Quint, it triggers their trans. Makes a diving effort to keep the ball alive. His teammate comes up with it. And the Dane train rolls. Watch it again. Right here. There. That play makes the goal. It's a great point, Quint. And Justin Ray is the point man for Albany for a reason. You think of Nanakoke, you think of Fields and all the... Baptiste wins this one. Erlin all over him. And we get a flag. Runberg can't handle the pass. Walker recovers. Has Runberg. Baptiste, he'll fire and score! Great from deep. It is a serious issue for opposing teams' defenses when 230 pounds is staring down a goaltender with high heat. Yeah, you know about the make it, take it. How about plant rip number nine? His career trajectory, his path is fascinating. Starting as a youth swimmer, picking up lacrosse late on his timeline. It was a hobby at first. Competitive swimming. And he started facing off and he got good. He got good fast. Franklin Marshall was an offer and Denver found him very late in the recruiting process. Imagine Trevor Baptiste taking face-offs in Division III. He's got the key traits you look for. It's a fast twitch, the power, technique, toughness, usage of the wings, and that last aspect, the stick. Nine seven Albany with the face-off advantage. Erlin and Baptiste battling. Baptiste wins another one. He's got one goal today. To give you an idea how dominant TD Erlin has been this season in the America East tournament, he took 49 face-offs. He lost one. He was 93% in eight America East games this season. Scotty was the offensive coordinator for those really good Maryland teams. 95 finalist, 97, 98. And those three men embody what Scott is now as a coach. You played with him, Quint. What was your impression of Scott Marr during the Hopkins days? Scott was a talented passer who we were classmates. And any time I was in a funk, I could look at him during practice and say, Scott, do you mind staying after practice and shooting on me? And he'd be thrilled and glad to do it. And then we'd talk about whatever, whether it was problems, whether it was in the goal, whether it was off the field. He, he, was, he was terrific help for me, a great, great teammate. Uh, talented player, he had 24 assists one year. Well, it looks like Albany's hesitant to leave Walker and French and slide or double team upfield. They'd rather take their chances with Denver's middies. That seems to be the game plan. The ensemble cast, though, has delivered faceoffs now 10 9 in favor of Denver. McCaffrey. Baptiste against Erlin. 
on the offensive end. Now Baptiste runs off with Erlen. Responding. Pioneers now with the advantage at the faceoff X. 10 9 after Albany won six of the first eight. Baptiste wow. and Erlen in a battle. The wings get involved. McClancy has it. Accelerating. McClancy shoots and scores. That has been Albany's DNA. Run and gun. You look at T, gets the initial draw. He gets walloped, no call. McClancy right there on the back end of that draw. And you have to pick him up. But the conflict here, Quint, is if you slide to him, then to Hogan Anacoke's on the doorstep for Connor Fields. We're getting to, to crunch time here. They're starting to figure each other's tendencies out, so you can tell there's been more wing face-off wins than probably the entire game combined within the last three. Um, and, and right now, they're both just fighting to try and win a couple in a row. Some headbutting going on Every there. You see, face-off is an absolute three-on-three -three war right now. Uh, it's, it's awesome. Paul, ask him about the, the headbutting that we saw there and, and the elbow, uses of the elbow. How about the headbutting and the elbows? So if you have your helmet over the ball and you've established your position, that's totally fine. You can't bend your knees and then drive your helmet and spear the guy. He may look like Spicoli, a little more put together than Spicoli. Got a tie-dye under his jersey, too, so aloha, Mr. Hayes. <laughs> He's had the hot hand today. was the great line if there we go we got the car here and I'm here yeah it's our time it's our time yeah when Mr. Hand dealing out the pizza Burgmaster with a rocket wide that was our first on Trevor Baptiste what's impressed you the most about TD in this moment TD has evolved he's having a great season but he keeps continuing to get better when you watch him on his clamp it looks different than it has all season his left foot is planted in the ground his right toes locked and on the whistle both are pushing off and he is over rotating on Trevor so Trevor's body weight means nothing because look at how look at how TD is completely to the right shoulder of Trevor that's the way you beat somebody when they're bigger and that's exactly what he's done all game, and he's doing it with, like, fierce competitiveness, and I love it. A hold against Denver. That's TD Erland's 13th face-off win, and he is now tied. Brendan Fowler's single-season record, Erland. Plus three against the greatest face-off man in college lacrosse and Trevor Baptiste, and... If it continues for Erlen, who knows? If he can stay healthy the next couple of years. Two years from now in May, we might be debating Erlen Baptiste the way our NBA game. Ball was right on the money. I mean, he was practically in his shooting motion before he even caught the pass. The face-offs get exponentially bigger with every score and every passing minute. Picked up by Denver. Logan shooting high. That was a good opportunity. A rare transition chance for Denver. Danny Logan. Danny Logan began last year as an offensive midi, then moved to D midi, back to offense this year, and then switched back to defense because of his versatility. The tension is already Jackson needed his potential to go kinetic he had a nice season last year they felt he could have been better they've wanted him to be more assertive take more shots it's a kid who wrote himself a letter in eighth grade the dream to play lacrosse at Denver he's unselfish he's underrated not today four goals only four shots though Rundberg all the way sandwiched Loose ball in front, clamped by Colorusso. Think about this moment with Greg the Beast Gorenli, and we know physically these guys do everything at an elite level. 
take me above the shoulders right now. For TD, he came here to, to start his legacy. He came here to prove that this is where he belongs at the top of this game, and he's done that. Now it's about winning this game and finishing it off. For Trevor, in the back of his mind, he's not ready to stop playing college lacrosse right now, and that's what he's thinking about. He needs to win faceoffs, but his offense needs to score for him so he can continue to play, and he's looking at the end of his career right now, and he wants to finish strong. Denver's got 13 faceoff wins. We're now even 14 apiece. Baptiste. Baptiste all the way. Hit the pipe. That's a shot. It will stay with Denver. Baptiste was the heavy favorite despite Erland's numbers coming into this game. They have battled to a standstill, but the scoreboard says Albany. As we take a look at this face-off with Greg the Beast. You know, T.D. Erland struggled with Connor Mackey, a much bigger guy. What's impressed you the most since that Yale game, the adjustments he's made today to go against Trevor Baptiste, who outweighs him by about 40 pounds? Maturity. You know, it's easy to just blame the refs, blame other people, your wings and stuff. But when you're in a game and, and you're having a great season like that, to actually go! stop and look at how you can continue to improve. Posture on this faceoff with their wings. They're double pulling the wings. And cut off transition. If you're TD, go slow here. Tie him up for as long as possible. Chew into that clock. The longer this faceoff goes, the more you can sit there and spin and spin and spin. The better. Erlin tying up Baptiste. Erlin wins the rake. The Albany contingent cheering. Erlin, tornadoes out of trouble. Fields has it with 20. Albany's just going to run out the clock. 